Okay, today we're gonna to talk about apps. We all have phones, they're easy to download, and when they're well-designed, they can make your life a lot easier. Sometimes they can even solve a problem you didn't even know you had, and as documentary filmmakers, we need all the help we can get. Shooting docs, especially if you're working with a small team or on your own maybe, is a ton of work. But the good news is that I've gone through the mountains of apps out there to find the ones that are genuinely useful and stay on my phone at all times. In this video, I'm gonna go over three in particular, one for each phase of the production process. So one that I use for pre-production, one that I use when I'm out in the field shooting, and one for post. And then go on to talk about how you can use them on your next shoot. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, and on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years of working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. Before we start, I just need to get a few things out of the way. First, I am not sponsored by any of these companies, and I didn't get free subscriptions in exchange for this video. Second, these apps aren't free, sadly. Though there are some free options, and it's possible that the free versions might work for you, to get the most out of them, you're probably gonna have to pay. I'm also using an iPhone, and I'm pretty sure these all work on Android as well, but I'm not totally sure. And aren't filmmakers required by law to use iPhones anyways? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, yeah. All right, now that I got that stuff out of the way, let's get into it. Filmmaking typically goes in three stages, pre-production, production, and post, or planning, shooting, and editing, to put it another way. Each of these parts of a project has different challenges and needs, and over the years, I've found myself using the same apps over and over again. I think it makes sense to start at the beginning and go in order, so let's start with pre-production. Pre-production happens after you've come up with your great idea and maybe you've got a crew together, but you're still working out exactly how you're gonna actually make the shoot happen. In narrative movies and commercials, the pre-production can be a huge process with full-on tech scouts and a ton of meetings. This makes sense because the cost of shooting is so high, like there might be a hundred people from grips to electricians standing around all day on shoot day, and if you don't know exactly what you're doing, it's gonna cost a fortune while you sit there and think about it. Documentaries aren't quite so complicated and usually you're working with way less resources, but even a little bit of scouting can go a long way to making the shoot go more smoothly. There might not always be time for it, like if one of your main characters has to rush out the door for an emergency and you have no choice but to grab your camera and chase after them, but odds are at least some of the time you're going to know where you're shooting and in my experience it's always a good idea to go and have a quick look ahead of time. For me, coming from a DP background, I'm always going to want to know about light. Specifically, what is it gonna look like when we actually get there to start shooting? Am I gonna need lights? Or is it gonna be so bright that I need to think about bringing extra ND filters? Are we gonna get nice golden sunlight or will it be hidden behind the building across the street? Normally you'd need to show up a day before at the exact time you're planning to shoot at if you wanted to figure that out, but luckily there's an incredible tool that will help you plan all of that at any time of the day. And that's Sunseeker. I first heard about this app from a friend who does narrative films and she convinced me to pick it up even though I didn't wanna pay for it. By the way, I think the US price is $9.99 at the time of recording this video and I'm pretty sure I paid closer to $20 when I bought it about eight years ago, but it was totally worth it then, so for under 10 bucks, it's a steal. Sunseeker is gonna allow you to see ahead of time exactly where the sun will be at each hour of the day so you know what to expect when you show up to start shooting. When you first open it up, you get this kind of confusing compass looking thing that I don't really use a lot, but but the real power of the app, in my opinion, is the 3D view. Once you enter this mode, you get an augmented reality overlay that shows the sun's path all the way through its arc. So imagine you're gonna be filming in a, I don't know, a workshop or an apartment, and you'd love to have some sun blasting through the windows. Just go to the location, open Sunseeker, and figure out what time the sun will be in the right place. Or maybe you have the opposite idea and you wanna make sure that an outdoor location will be in the shade. Sunseeker can show you exactly when the sun is gonna be behind the apartment building and how long it'll stay there for. Another situation that I use it in all the time is to figure out how much shooting time you have left in the day. It's all well and good to Google sunset time for wherever you're filming, but that's based on the Earth's horizon, not what's actually in front of you. What if there's a mountain range or a bunch of office buildings? You might lose the light a full hour earlier than you're expecting, and knowing exactly how much time you have left before you lose the light can be really valuable information. For $10, it's a no-brainer in my opinion, and I pretty much use this app at least a couple of times on every single shoot I go on. Okay, so the planning phase is over and you're actually out there filming your documentary. Things are going great and your characters are giving you amazing sound bites all over the place. You've been rolling all day and maybe you have seven hours of solid gold. That's the documentary filmmaker's dream. 
until you get into the edit. Documentaries have super high shooting ratios, and you can easily shoot more than an hour of footage for every one minute you end up using. If you're editing this yourself, it could mean weeks or even months of time sifting through everything to find the good parts. And if you're paying an editor to do it for you, it can get real expensive real fast. It's so much better to be able to have notes on who said what and when as you go into the edit so you can get right to the important moments and go from there. As you're shooting, you might think that you'll remember your main character got really emotional at 12.55 p.m. or that they said one amazingly profound thing at 9.12, but believe me, you won't. In the moment, it might seem like there's no way you'll forget, but you will, probably in about five minutes if you're anything like me. If you're gonna have any chance at remembering, especially after a long day of shooting, you're gonna need help, and that's where this next app comes in. I've tried a ton of solutions over the years, from Apple Notes to voice recordings, but nothing has been as helpful as Timecode Plus Cameraman. The name is kind of weird, and I'm not sure how they came up with that one, but all that matters is that it works, and it really does work. This app basically allows you to make quick notes on the fly that are automatically time-coded or linked to the time of day. So imagine your main character just said something you think is really gonna help push the story along. You just take out your phone, make a new note, and it's gonna log it along with the time code or time of day. That means as long as your camera has time code, or at the very least the clock is set properly, you're gonna have a running list of exactly when each thing was said. Then you can take that list into post, and as you start hunting for the important moments, you'll know exactly where they are. Now you can do this manually in a text document, but when things are moving fast, it is such a pain in the ass to check the time and then type it when all you want to do is get back to shooting. And if your production size gets bigger and you have two cameras and a sound guy, keeping track of what happened and when just gets more and more important. This is a simple solution to a problem all documentary filmmakers have, and trust me, whoever is editing your film will thank you for keeping a time-coded log. At the time of filming, Timecode Plus costs $6.99, and I kind I wish it cost a little less considering it's pretty simple, but it solves a very real problem and to me that makes it more than worth it. All right, so you got through the shoot day and you've handed off all the footage to your editor. You've been able to give them detailed notes through Timecode Plus, which has made it super easy for them to go through and pick out all the most important moments and put together a rough cut to show you. But then how do you give them feedback on this rough cut? If you've got a massive budget, you might have a production office that you could pop into, but you might still be shooting and don't wanna to have to go back and forth to a physical location every day. Plus, COVID is still a thing, and I personally would much rather review footage from home and send it back digitally than have to keep going back and forth. There's also Vimeo or YouTube even, but your editor has to export the rough cut, upload it to Vimeo, send you the link, and then you're gonna to have to make notes in a separate program and add all the time code yourself. This does work, and I've done it many times, but there's a way more elegant solution, and once you start using it, you're never gonna to wanna to go back. And that's Frame.io. Frame.io is another trick I picked up from my friends in the narrative world, and cinema DPs use it all the time to review dailies remotely. But it's also really handy for documentaries as well, especially since a lot of the time my editors aren't even in the same city as me, let alone the same room. Basically, it's an online video player like Vimeo or something, but with a twist. And that's that you can make notes as you watch and have them linked instantly to specific spots on the timeline. Then everyone on the project can see exactly where you made the notes and what changes you want without having to look at a long text document. It also means that more than one person can add notes or even comment on the comments. So when you have a few people involved in the edit, it helps simplify what could otherwise be a messy email chain or forcing the poor editor to read four different text documents to try and make sense of them all. So if you think the music sucks at three minutes and four seconds, just hit the new note button and the editor can see what you're talking about. Or if you think a certain shot needs to be cut sooner, you can make a note at the exact second you want the cut to happen without having to manually type in the time code. These days, so much production happens remotely. I live in Canada and most of the editors I work with on a professional shoot are in LA or probably New York. Even for this YouTube channel, my editor is a Colombian living in Spain. And for me, it's pretty rare to physically meet most of the editors I work with. And this is what makes Frame.io so useful these days. And with the phone app, you'll be able to review and make notes on the edit from an airport or a bus just as easily as you can from your desk. The bad news is that it's the most expensive of all three. There is a free version that might work for small projects, but for anything bigger, you're gonna have to sign up for a monthly subscription for about $15. I think that's more than worth it for how well it streamlines the post-production workflow, and you can always cancel it when your edit is done. But maybe don't tell them I said that in case they wanna give me a sponsorship down the line. There you go. Three apps that I use all the time that will help make each stage of the production process a lot easier. I'd highly recommend any of these, and they're all on my phone all of the time. If there's any apps that you use that you think I should add to this list, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something from that. If you did, maybe think about hitting that subscribe button. And if you liked that video, maybe check out this other one I made about six useful filmmaking items you can buy for less than $20. See ya.